Hi, my name is Byron Martin, and today we're going to be talking about camellias. The camellias are flowering shrubs native to Japan and China, and although there are hundreds of species of camellias, the ones that we grow in ornamental horticulture are generally of the Japonica or Sasanqua types. There are also some species that we have in our collection that have been hybridized with the Japonicas and others that bring fragrance to the collection. There are many varieties of camellias, and some of them have actually been bred to grow farther north. This is the hardier varieties. They're easily grown as shrubs in the south and quite far north. We're in zone five, six here. If you go down to seven, that would be even in our area on Long Island. Many of the plants of the Sasanquas or the Japonicas do quite well. So when you're growing them in containers and you're subjecting them to below freezing temperatures at night, that would be on an unheated porch, unheated greenhouse, coal frame, or such things. You need to make sure that the root system doesn't freeze solid and then thaw out. So generally what we recommend is mulching, wrapping the root system, not necessarily to the top of the plant, but just the roots to keep them just below freezing or just at freezing so it doesn't freeze solid. Camellias as a container plant need an acidic soil and generally what we grow them here at Logies in is a soil where lime has been omitted. Most of our soils contain peat or bark, peat moss that is, and that in itself acidifies the soil. They also are light feeders so camellias really don't need to be in a constant feed or fed frequently, but generally what we do is we feed them once a year. And right now we are in the um, middle of winter and shortly within the next few weeks, many of our shrubs here will start to force growth. And that is the time that we apply fertilizer to our camellias and containers. Some of the best feed that you can give them is a granulated organic holytone or other acidic granulated organic fertilizers are excellent for feeding and they can be done by taking a handful of the granules and sprinkle it in on the top of the pot and let the wa irrigation water water in the nutrients and that happens over a period of time. Also they have a high demand for magnesium and so at that time of year we generally give them a tablespoon to the gallon of Epsom salts or magnesium sulfate and water it in once. For the remainder of the year, we reduce or restrict fertilizer completely. Camellias are pretty free of insects. Occasionally, we do see aphids that get on the soft growth in the springtime. The major problem with growing them can be root disease, and this is where the root system has been um, compromised by either too much fertilizer or too high a water amount or it's too wet a soil during the winter time or the cold period of the year. When they do become dry, the soil does get dry, it allows air to move into the soil and, and then we can develop um, a healthy root system. And here's some, this plant has recently been repotted, but there's some healthy roots that are developing at the bottom of the pot. And that's a good sign, that's what you want to look for. Camellias in their natural state grow in open forest where they get dappled sun or a fair amount of light. In a container uh, where we're growing them in the home or outside in the summertime or even planting them in the ground, we want to put them in partial sun and that's an east or west exposure or could be a northern exposure um, and they still will do fine underneath that. And one of the things is that the leaves become very dark green when the light level is proper. If your leaves get very bleached and yellow, oftentimes that means you have too much sun on them. Camellias that are grown in containers do need to be pruned, and the pruning is to um, maintain shape, to control height, and also to increase um, bushiness of growth. If, if we take a pot that has been planted, a young cutting here, it grows straight up and will do so, and eventually it will branch. But if we're trying to grow this as a container or even as a shrub, this plant really needs to be headed back. And so what we do is we take this long lead, and this should be done about this time of year, just before growth starts, and we would uh, prune it back pretty hard. We cut it down to there. Now what we've left is a bud there, and we have some buds there. These will break out. This is also another lead coming out. We clip the tip off of that. Fairly drastic, but what it's actually going to do is it's going to increase this bushy growth, this, this dense growth. Thank you for watching today. We've talked a little bit about how to grow camellias. They're quite easy to grow. You just have to remember to be easy on the feed and grow them in a cool condition during the winter time. If you have any interest in the culture of them, we have an article on our website at logis.com.